Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely 1 12th scale baby's cot. Lovely little foam mattress in there as well. And for this project I've used a Besh wood and that's spelled O-B-E-C-H-E and you'll need um, sheet wood and strip wood in three different sizes. All of those will be given in the cutting list which is coming up next. To cut the wood I use a Swan Morton craft knife which takes a size 10A blade. It's got a metal handle that will cut wood up to the thickness of 3mm. For cutting the strip wood you'll need a mitre block and saw, a steel rule for measuring and for using along with the knife to cut the wood, a nice sharp pencil for accurate marking, a wood glue or PVA and I use this Gorilla Wood Glue which bonds really quickly and dries clear. I apply glue with a cocktail stick, I just dispense a little bit onto a, a bit of card and apply it from there and I also use cocktail sticks to remove the excess glue from along the joins. A couple of grades of sandpaper will be needed. I use a 120 um, for the sort of shaping and harder work and then a 500 um, for the sort of smoothing it, getting it ready for paint. And I cut them into these little pieces just to make them easier to handle. And then to make the mattress, a piece of card, six millimeter or quarter of an inch foam. It's a nice soft piece of upholstery foam there. And then some nice fabric with an appropriate design. And this is just a, a cotton, a poly cotton fabric. And I think that's everything you're going to need. The cutting list, like I say, is coming up next, and then we'll get started. Okay, we're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the cot ends. So take one of the cot end pieces and turn it lengthways, and begin by making a pencil mark um, 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch from the bottom edge. Like that. And join those up with a faint pencil line. And then I've just applied some glue here onto a piece of cereal packet card and I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it with. So apply it to the back of one of the mouldings. And attach the first piece along that top edge so that the edges of each piece are flush. and use a clean cocktail stick to remove the excess glue from along the join. The second moulding we're going to attach so it sits just above that pencil line we've just drawn. Like that. And so that you'll just hide in that pencil line. And then the remaining piece will go along the bottom edge. And again, make sure the edges are nice and flush. Remove any excess glue. And then when you're attaching mouldings to wood, they do tend to try to curl upwards as the glue dries, so you always need to secure them. And to do that I'm using clothes pegs, or you could use mini clamps if you have them. So that can then be left to dry, and you can prepare the same, the remaining side piece in the same way. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the pegs, turn the piece over and this time we're going to make a pencil mark 10 millimetres from the bottom or 3 eighths of an inch and the bottom is the edge that's got the two mouldings closer together. So make the pencil marks, one on each edge of the wood. Join that line up.
And again, we're going to attach a moulding, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then one just above that pencil line. And this is the inside of the cot. Of that pencil line. Move the excess glue. And once again, use your pegs or clamps to secure those into place. Leave it to dry and repeat the process with the remaining cot end. So again, once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the pegs and then sand along each side of each piece, just going along the sandpaper in one direction rather than going back and forth, which will round off the edges. And I've already done these. And then we're going to attach a leg to each side. So apply glue along each edge. and then attach a leg to each side so that the top of each piece is nice and flush. You've got a nice straight line along the top edge there. Press that all into place. Again, remember to remove any excess glue And you can send away excess glue um, before painting, but it's always best to remove as much as you can while it's still sort of tacky. Don't forget to remove the excess glue from the other side as well. That piece can then be left to dry. And you can do the same with the remaining end. Okay, so now take one upper and one lower side support and make pencil marks all the way along at 10 millimeter intervals or 25 sixty-fourths of an inch. Okay, so do that on both pieces. And then take your rungs and just apply a little dot of glue to each end. I'm attaching them to the lower support first and just place the rung so it sits centrally below that pencil mark. So the pencil mark there is in the centre of the rung width. And again, go all the way along. that and then bring in your sort of upper side support and attach it so that each of the rungs are sitting again centrally over that pencil mark and you may just need to use another cocktail stick here just to sort of maneuver them gently into place so just line them all up that and then just very carefully press the pieces together ensuring that the rungs stay flat on the work surface as well and press it all together until the glue begins to take and then rather than trying to pick that up just very carefully just edge it along your worktop like that and that piece can be left to dry and then you can just construct the remaining side in exactly the same way. OK, 
Okay, so once the glue is completely dry, just very carefully erase the pencil marks and then you can use your fine grade sandpaper just to sand the piece um, to prepare for paint. And just keep the piece on your work surface as you do that and you can do it on both sides as well. And this flat edge will become the inside edge of the cot. And then because of how it's constructed, I just find it easier to paint um, before construction. So paint your side pieces and your end pieces and your base. And then we'll paint the end tops um, once they're fitted. And we can give the whole thing a, a second coat of paint once it's constructed. <music> So each of the pieces has had one coat of paint and I've given them a gentle sand so now we can construct. So take the base piece and apply glue along each long edge and then place that piece down on the worktop and the inside edge is the flatter edge of the side piece. So on the outside edge you'll have a bit of a lip and the inside will be flat. So glue that and the, so that the widest um, side support is at the bottom. Glue that along that edge of the base. Making sure that the front and backs of the pieces are flush. So you've got a nice straight edge along there and along the back there. And you can glue the other side into place as well. Again, so that, that flat edge is facing inwards. And it's a good idea to have a couple of pieces of strip wood handy. And then you can put one at either side of the base. And just push all that together. And as well as pushing the side pieces against the base, it sort of pulls it all up into a sort of upright position, squares it all off. So press that together until the glue begins to take. And then you can just slide that piece along your worktop and that can be left to dry. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, Take one of the cot ends and place it on your worktop so that the wider spaced mouldings are facing downwards. So this is the inside with the ones that are closer together. Apply glue to the ends of the cot. Like that. And then this straight edge, the base piece, is going to be along the bottom of that second moulding. So the side pieces will be attached to the legs. I'll just turn that around and show you what I mean. So the base piece is level with that second moulding. The side pieces are sort of stuck to the legs. And then if you turn it around and just make sure that these ends are on the leg and not sort of overhanging the inside of the cot. So like that, and that will square it all up. Just very gently press it down. I'm just going to remove some of that excess glue. And I just want to let that dry off just for a moment. So with your remaining cot end again, so that the wider spaced mouldings are facing downwards. Apply glue again to the other end of the cot. And I just find it easier to attach the cot to the side rather than attaching the side to the sort of standing cot. So do it this way round. And again, exactly the same thing. So your base piece is lined up with the bottom of that second moulding. 
the lower side supports are on the legs. So the base there is the same width as the moulding, so that will be there. And then just level up these um, top supports so that they're on the leg and not overhanging the inside of the cot. You've got a little bit of time to manoeuvre before your glue begins to take. Just very carefully press all that down. And again you can remove any excess glue from along those joins. Let's move that out of place there. And once again that piece can be left to dry. Pop that over there. So whilst that's drying we're going to round two corners along one long edge of each of the end stops. So with your sandpaper, um, medium grade sandpaper on your worktop, hold the piece so that the wider end is to the side and just sweep it towards you, bring it into an upright position as you do so. No need to apply too much pressure. Already you can see that's beginning to round off. So do that a few more times. And then you can turn it around and do the corner on that same side. And when you've got a nice even curve at both ends, you can take your finer grade sandpaper and just tidy that up. Okay, to do that with both of the end top pieces and then we can attach them to the cot. So apply glue along that sort of top end. And then the curves will be facing outwards, so the straight edge is towards the inside of the cot and there'll be a tiny little overhang at either end probably less than a millimetre at either end, so just line that up and then make sure that this line along here is nice and flush and I'm just going to use a couple of pieces of masking tape just to hold that into place so just pull those over the end like that make sure that you keep a nice flush line that and then do the same at the other end. Once again that can then be left to dry. So once the glue has dried remove the masking tape and then use your fine grained sandpaper to smooth the top of those and then you can paint those and I've noticed a lot of um, places that I've missed, like all along those inside of those rungs, so I'm going to give the whole thing a second coat of paint. So to make the mattress, cut a piece of card that is just slightly smaller than the base piece, and probably just about a millimetre on the width and sort of length. And then apply glue. Use a spreader just to spread that out, like that, and then attach the card to your piece of foam, and then just put a piece of um, kitchen towel on there, because I'm going to weigh it down with a couple of books, and you don't want to get glue on your books. So weigh that down, and wait until the glue has dried. So once the glue has dried, just trim the foam from around the card, like that, and then apply double sided tape to the back of the card, and this is the one inch thick, but you can buy it thicker than this, so I'm going to put a couple of um, strips down there. Okay, and then cut a piece of fabric that is about an inch um, wider, or 25mm wider, all the way around and begin by making a cut from the outer edge of the fabric up to the corner of the foam 
and do that at opposite ends. And then you want to make a, another cut to the outer edge of this one and about six millimeters, quarter of an inch, so the thickness of your foam and card to that side. So you're sort of creating a little flap like that. And again, do that at each corner. And then snip away the square of fabric at each corner. So you're just sort of leaving the flap there like that. Okay, so starting at one end, apply glue to each of the little flaps. And then lift up the side of the fabric and push the flap in and along the edge of the foam. Stick that down and do the same on the other side. Like that. And then turn it around and do the same at the other end. And then just carefully remove the backing from the double sided tape. And then pull over the side flaps, stick them down. Don't pull too tightly as you'll sort of distort the foam. But nice and firm so you get a nice straight edge. And then trim away any sort of excess fabric at the end there. Same the other end. And then apply glue to the flaps. And then that piece as well can be folded onto the back of the foam. Pinch at each corner like that and then do the same at the other end. Like that. And then just apply a line of glue around the edges of the underneath. And then the mattress can be fixed into place inside the cot. Just slip that in, press it down. Like that. that looks really comfy. And then I've just made a little um, pillow here to go with it. And that's just 45 mil wide by 20 mil high. Pop that there. And there is the completed project. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If so, please do subscribe to the channel as there's lots more to come. And let me know as well if you'd like to see more furniture for the nursery. I think a changing table in this sort of style would look really nice. And if you do enjoy making your own doll's house furniture and miniatures, you might like to have a look at my books. I've published three of them now. They're all available to purchase from Amazon, and I'll pop a couple of links below. And for now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.